This here is our ship rat. It's New Zealand's worst pest. We can tell this is a ship rat, it's got a long tail and it's yellow and we know because it's been out on the sea and it was a bit rough and it's not feeling very well. The so kids anyway, at Patamahoy School in rural South Auckland are about to get a messy lesson in pest control. Okay. Oh, he's looking <laughs> <laughs> oh. But behind this bit of fun lurks a serious issue. Rats, possums, stoats and ferrets are decimating our native bird population and pushing species to the brink of extinction. This shocking footage of a rat raiding a nest of baby piwaka waka is just one example. Every year predators like these kill tens of millions of native birds and managing them costs the country more than 70 million dollars a year. That's why there's a government-led drive to make New Zealand predator-free by 2050. It's an ambitious goal to remove all of the most damaging introduced predators from New Zealand over the next 33 years. But it can't be done by DOC or big conservation groups alone. So the Predator Free New Zealand Trust is targeting rural and urban communities aiming to place traps in every fifth backyard across New Zealand. Being able to um, trap in your backyard is a really easy way for community members to get involved and do something. Jesse Morgan of Predator Free New Zealand says it's important to target vermin in suburban gardens as well as the bush. What we're finding is that if you control rats and predators within the city or urban environments, then it stops the flow of predators back into the bush. So where the work's being done in the reserves, it helps provide an extra layer of defence for those reserve projects. Here at Auckland Zoo, there's a sobering reminder of what we've already lost and what we're fighting to save. New Zealand has the highest rate of threatened species in the world. 80% of our native bird species are in trouble and around 20 species are on the critical list, including the black robin and the kakapo. It's clear drastic action must be taken and now hope is being pinned on the next generation. There's a lot of research that shows the importance of encouraging kids to get out into the environment, especially between the ages of 6 and 12. If you can hook them into nature then, it shapes their attitude and behaviour towards the environment for life. So what better way to get kids out there than spotting birds and trapping rats? These guys are chew cards and are... Andrew Sinclair what? leads Patamahui's predator-free initiative. And what we normally do is we put them up on a tree like this and they've got peanut butter bait inside them. So a mouse might come along and see how they just take one little bit of yep. the layer, one layer and not the other. But um, here comes a rat. And he comes along, he just takes out everything. Eats the plastic as well as the peanut butter. And Andrew's so passionate about the project, he's brought the local the school on board. And now pull it out and see if the door opens, see if the work door works. Oh, awesome, that's great. That's a he makes regular visits to teach kids how to protect native wildlife. When you're starting with children, they're, um, they're enthusiastic yeah, right from the start. Guys. Yeah, ready to engage. There it is. <coughs> yum, yum. Is it easy to work with kids? Yeah, it's all it's cool, yeah, and really easy, and it's a lot of fun too, yeah. The students of 9 and 10, they're like sponges. They, they want to learn so much, and what they do learn, they hold with them in their heart. You know, if they're really passionate about the environment and being predator-free, it's something that they'll take with them as they progress through their life. What we're doing here, we pull this up over that lever, and then this just releases gently back onto that trap there. So now you're going to yeah. make out your estate. So you'll have to come yeah. in through the hole there and come lift it up above the plate. Yeah, and <laughs> hey! <laughs> Building the, the rat catchers has been amazing. And um, doing the bird counts, we've done that four times a year. And they've, they've loved watching the amount of kedidu that we see increase and the number of tuis have increased throughout the year. So just being out in nature and learning about it more has been awesome. The dab chick are quite rare, so we've got two of them too. That's it. They will come right to the end, guys. Come right to the end.
One of the best ways to measure the success of a predator-free project is to make frequent counts of the local bird population. OK, we should be able to see some good birds here. In Patamahoe, there's been a steep rise in the number of native birds, especially kereru, since pest control began. Tui and kereru and fantail, almost anyone can identify them. So anyone can get out there and count them. And, um, and the tui are very sensitive to rat numbers and possum numbers. And so if you can monitor the outcome, and that's what you want uh, as native biodiversity, and by monitoring that, we're getting a good indication that things we're doing are working. There's two. There's a piwaka waka fantail. Piwaka waka, that's, a, that's up here, fantail. There's people power, and that, that's the key point, is that there's lots of people, and, and now people are wanting to be involved. And so rather than try and hook them into a remote part of Fjordland, where, and what can I do to help there, hey, look, just start in your own backyard. Yeah, just get a rat trap, get it going, and um, monitor a few birds, and just enjoy the environment that is around you and you can really make a difference and that's the key is that to bring about change people have to be able to easily get involved. And getting involved they are. So far with the support of Kiwi Bank, Predator Free New Zealand has helped 24 community groups throughout the country, providing funds to buy traps and other tools for predator control. These communities are popping up all over the country it started in Wellington, and um, Wellington now, I don't think, has a single suburb where there isn't a movement for a predator-free suburb. Um, Picton is another example, which is a bit more um, a bit more provincial, I guess, than the urban Wellington. And Auckland's also started to get a number of um, communities. Auckland's Grey Lynn is one of the latest communities to join the crusade. I think we forget what we've lost and there used to be thousands of birds so that when people talked about the dawn chorus when people came here 200 years ago it was so loud it woke them and we just don't have that any longer and it would be amazing if we could work towards that in the future. And it's their own future that neighbours Thomas, Candice and Barney are trying to preserve. Our generation needs to be more aware because humans aren't doing very well in helping the world. So if our generation steps up and helps the world, then we might be able to live in it for a lot longer. How hard was it to get other people involved in the suburb? Well, I was amazed at how enthusiastic people were. So we did a pop-up shop at Greyland Market and had about 60 traps. And they all went within about an hour and a half. And then we got about another 60 people who wanted traps too. People were so keen, one, because who likes rats? Nobody really wants them in their, in their backyard. And two, because I think they all see the vision of having more birds in, in the neighbourhood is really great. Jessie Morgan is seeing a growing commitment to the cause and believes it's only a matter of time before there's a trap in every fifth backyard. How do we get more New Zealanders involved? Yeah, so I think we need to make it easier for them. I think ideally we'd have, you could buy a trap when you went to the supermarket and it would just be something we all did. And Jessie is confident that New Zealand can achieve the predator-free target by 2050. I do think it can be done, I'm, ho I'm really hopeful, and I think that the more we rally New Zealanders around this cause, the more likely it is to happen. We've all got a role to play, and I think that's really important that we um, all do our bit. If we can appeal to everyone, and not just the kind of smelly hippies, <laughs> then, um, then that's success for us, that's really good.